It's that time of the year again. With the spring 2016 anime season underway in less than a month, I decided to hop on to Anachart and check out the upcoming anime, as well as give the top 12 anime I am looking forward to most. So without any further ado, let's get to the list. Number 12. Kagewani Show. I am aware that Fall 2015's Kagewani was certainly not a fan favorite. However, it was actually a series I rather enjoyed. The show, while brief, proved to be a nice tone piece that managed to create a good atmosphere and made me feel genuine horror at points. It was also really nice to see a show that was able to do horror competently in such a brief amount of time, unlike other short series that had tried to do things similarly. While I'm not exactly expecting a masterpiece out of this one, I do expect that the series will continue to deliver what Season 1 gave me, and that is a nice, quick tone piece. Number 11, Sakamoto Desuka. Unfortunately, there is no promotional video out at the time of this recording, so I can't really put Sakamoto Desuka any higher than number 11. However, based upon what I have read from the description, as well as the people working on it, I think that the series has potential to be an extremely funny comedy with a lot of charm and heart to it. At the same time, I do think it might run the risk of being a bit repetitive, which is why it also has me weary. That being said, while I'm not horribly familiar with Shinji Takamatsu's work, having only seen bits and episodes from School Rumble and Daily Lives of High School Boys, I found both of those shows to be quite funny, so I'm hoping this delivers. Number 10. I want to let you know that I love you. This might seem like an extremely odd choice to many people, so allow me to explain. I have grown quite fond of Chico with Honeyworks, who have performed opening songs for countless anime recently, including Blue Spring Ride, Magic Kaito 1412, and the newest season of Gintama. This movie is created by Honeyworks, and I basically expect it to be much like their comics they have in their videos. Maybe this film will be just another vanilla romance story, but I really am hoping that there will be some charm to this movie, and I think the music might add to this as well, and add to the mood. If it does turn out to just be a more fleshed out version of the comics, then I think it could really end up being a pretty cute romance story. It is definitely a title I'm greatly looking forward to, and even if it does turn out underwhelming, at least I'll get some enjoyable songs from it, which can't be that bad. Number 9, Kiznaiver. Trigger is a studio that I've felt has been kind of disappointing, since I don't really think they've lived up to what old Gainax has made, but I do think something like Kiznaiver is a step in the right direction. Whether or not the series succeeds, it's great to see an original anime with a fascinating premise, and from the looks of it, a lot of style. When it comes to writer Mario Kata, I haven't seen too many of her works, but I have enjoyed most of what I've seen from her. So if anything, I expect the show to be conceptually interesting, though I can equally see how the show could end up being a convoluted mess. This is just one I guess we'll have to wait and see on, but the premise just has me interested, and I'm just glad Trigger's not making another clip art show. Number 8, Phoenix Wright. It's pretty strange to see that we're actually getting a Phoenix Wright anime, specifically the fact that the anime is coming out right around the time period the first game takes place in. I really enjoyed the first Phoenix Wright game, and unfortunately, I've never played any of the others. However, the game had a lot of funny jokes and personality to it, and while most video game adaptations aren't as good as their video game counterpart, I think this is a game that's able to get by on its clever writing, alongside its interactivity. I'm thinking that the show could possibly be able to build tension and create an enjoyable experience, but at the same time, I'm also hoping that this isn't just some dry cash grab for the games. Either way, I still look forward to judging Phoenix Wright on its own merits. Number 7. Joker Game World War II is a topic people constantly bring up, though more so on the western side of things rather than the eastern, which is why I'm very much interested in Joker Game, especially since other anime relating to World War II, such as Grave of the Fireflies and Barefoot Gen, tend to do so from the perspective of the civilians rather than the soldiers actually fighting. I also see that the scripts are being done by Taku Kishimoto, who you may know from shows such as Usagi Drop, Silver Spoon, and Erased this season. 
I have always viewed him as a very competent scriptwriter, so I do have certain expectations. Joker Game looks to be an engrossing period drama, and one that I am quite fascinating by. I hope that it will be able to deliver on what it promises. Number 6. My Hero Academia Shonen Jump series were definitely the foundation of where I got my start in anime. Most of the shows I watched as a kid were battle shonen series, and I ended up reading a lot of the manga they were based off of too. As I grew older though, I grew to stray more and more away from those kinds of shows, which is why I was initially kind of uninterested in My Hero Academia. However, as I talked with other people about the series and I heard more and more regarding it, I grew to be more excited for it. Studio Bones and the comic book aesthetic are two things that just go great together, and after watching the PV, it looks like it will just be a heck of a lot of fun with excellent animation and action scenes. I have also really grown to dig the character designs. It's for those reasons that I can put My Hero Academia at number 6 on this list, and I still greatly look forward to seeing on how it delivers. Number 5, Jojo Part 4. I'm aware this isn't the most popular opinion out there, but I was not a huge fan of Jojo Part 3. I thought it was way too long, and had too many episodic villains. With that in mind, each part of Jojo is very much a fresh start to the series, which is why Part 3 has not killed my excitement for this new part of the franchise. There's very little to say other than I expect more of what makes Jojo so fun. The cheesy but charming dialogue, the fun characters, the over-the-top action sequences, the manga aesthetic, the music references, and the sense of adventure. If it can give me that, then it's quite honestly set, and should prove to be a great entry into the spring 2016 season. Number 4. Under the Dog Some of you may not know this, but I was a massive fan of Sword of the Stranger. I thought the action sequences in that were phenomenal, and definitely some of the best within the medium. The film's writing was simple, yet it got the job done. I expect Under the Dog to deliver, much like Masahiro Ando's other works, in giving some fantastic action sequences. If the writing is kept simple like Sword of the Stranger, then it should prove to be another excellent action flick worth everyone's time. The best part is that something like this was able to be funded by the public, which just goes to show that there actually is interest in cool and unique anime. All the companies need to do is just be able to fund a full-length series of this stuff and we'll be all set. Number 3. Bungo Stray Dogs It's absolutely no secret that I love Studio Bones, and I had actually read a few chapters of the Bungo Stray Dogs manga. The manga very much felt like a combination of Noragami and Kekai Sensen, and I can see it being a very good action mystery series. I really like how the series has characters that are representations of authors, and I think it will definitely do a better job portraying Ronpo Edogawa than that last series did. I also really like the character designs, as they aesthetically remind me of a better version of Nabari no O. Plus, Taku Iwasaki is a composer I'm quite fond of, so I'm almost guaranteed to love the OST to the series as well, especially since I loved the song that played in the first PV. Bungo Stray Dogs looks very promising, and if it starts out a bit lacking in this core, it has another core in fall that may be able to improve upon the first's faults, or end up screwing things up depending on how one looks at things. Either way, I still greatly look forward to seeing how Bungo Stray Dogs turns out. Number 2. Flying Witch I am honestly sure that most people who know me and know my tastes are shocked about this being on the list, especially so high, but after watching the PV for this, as well as looking at the description and the staff, I am pretty much sold. The series very much feels like a slice of life with light supernatural elements that will ultimately add a bit to the show. What had really sold me was the warm, fuzzy, almost welcoming feeling that the PV led on. This feels like something that will just leave me feeling good and feeling happy I watched it. What further cements this theory of mine is the fact that the series is being written by Hitomi Miyano, who wrote the series' composition on Snow White with the Red Hair. While I may have quite a few complaints regarding that series, one thing that show was always able to get right was that fuzzy feeling I had when watching it, and I think that Flying Witch is very much playing on Miyano's strengths. 
If it does turn out to be bland and nothing special, then so be it, but a part of me does think that this will be something incredibly worthwhile. Number 1. Concrete Revolutio, The Last Song It's absolutely no shock to anyone that the second season of Concrete Revolutio is my number one pick for next season. I adored the first season for its themes of moral ambiguity, its strong characters, its great action scenes, and its comic book aesthetic, and the first season ended with a lot of questions that pretty much perfectly set it up for a second season. The guest writers will also add a lot of interesting things to this new season, though I'm potentially a bit worried that it might end up being a situation of too many cooks, where there are too many writers on staff, but if the show is able to continue with its strong themes and give a greater exploration of the show's characters, then I will be on board all the way. So with all of that in mind, I'd be interested in knowing what your top picks are for next season in the comments. What has you guys the most fascinated? I'm actually somewhat hoping that something I didn't put on this list from next season will end up being good, because I always like being surprised. But ultimately, let me know what your thoughts are, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like as well as subscribe for more of my own insight.